supplemental oxygen, proceed with caution. First, a disclaimer. This content is based on patient perspective and reading medical literature. Don't use this content as a substitute for medical care. Seek medical care for breathing or respiratory muscle weakness from a licensed clinician who specializes in the breathing issues of those living with neuromuscular disease. First off, what are the important gases in our blood? Well, we have two of them, oxygen or O2, it's in the air that we breathe, and carbon dioxide or CO2, it's in what we exhale, the waste product of the air that we breathe. What exactly is supplemental oxygen? Well, it's additional oxygen that we're receiving beyond what that person is getting by breathing on their own. Oxygen delivered through a nasal cannula while the individual is not using mechanical or assisted ventilation is generally what we are concerned about for someone living with a neuromuscular disease. Why is it a problem? Well, getting additional oxygen beyond what we would get from quote unquote room air makes it difficult for some of us, depending on our breathing or respiratory muscle strength, to effectively exhale the waste product, the carbon dioxide, quickly or effectively enough. We also have something called the respiratory center in our brain stem, and it may get the false impression that the body has enough oxygen and no longer needs to breathe. And without breathing or by breathing more shallowly, carbon dioxide can build to dangerous levels called hypercapnia that in worst case scenarios can result in death. There are safe ways to administer oxygen though. This excerpt from the International Ventilator Users Network, IVAN, called Take Charge, Not Chances. Um, this is a collection of documents that we have available on our website, breathewithmd.org. Just go to the resources page and scroll down to the Take Action section. But in this document, they provide four conditions that experts are recommending um, that only in these four conditions, if all of them are met, supplemental oxygen be administered. The first one is an additional pulmonary condition is present, such as COPD, pneumonia, or pulmonary embolism, and oxygen saturation is below 90% and Secretion management with a device such as the cough assist or air stacking, that's um, stacking small sips of air, has failed to improve oxygen saturation levels and assisted or mechanical ventilation is securely in place. Again, I want to stress that experts are recommending that supplemental oxygen be administered only if all four of these conditions are met. You may be familiar with our respiratory care information card that Breathe With MD Inc. distributes more frequently at, at outreach events, um, generally at neuromuscular disease conferences and support groups that we attend. I wanted to call out the normal oxygen saturation level that's listed here. It says that's 95% or greater. But if you recall on this list of four conditions, it's referring to oxygen saturation below 90%. So in these four conditions, they're calling out not when you drop below normal, but when you drop further below the normal level. Lastly, I want to encourage you to go to our oxygen caution page on breathewithmd.org. This is going to describe in more detail all about the dangers of supplemental oxygen for someone with a neuromuscular disease. 
and you're going to find lots of supporting references, medical articles that you can uh, select the link to go to and read and print and maybe even share with your neuromuscular disease care team. Before we end this discussion, I wanted to briefly review some frequently asked questions. I want to remind you though of our disclaimer um, because I want you to ensure that you address these questions with your NMD specializing care team. Everyone is different, so just keep that in mind when we review these questions and answers. First off, I use oxygen with my BiPAP or ventilator at night. Is this safe? Well, generally what we read from medical literature is that if the settings on a bi-level device are enabled optimally for that individual to normalize their blood gases and provide breathing muscle rest and to give them um, a fuller, larger breath of air, um, then they should need supplemental oxygen. Unless it's a scenario like what we reviewed um, with those four conditions. Maybe the individual is still recovering from a pneumonia. So in that scenario, then supplemental oxygen may be warranted. But again, please refer to your clinicians and see what they would advise um, that would be best for you. I just use oxygen during the daytime as needed. Is this safe? Wow, this one would set off some alarm bells for me, particularly if this individual was not using the supplemental oxygen entrailed with their bi-level mechanical or assisted ventilation. This is a situation where if you're using it without any uh, mechanical ventilation assistance at all, you could get into trouble depending on how weak your breathing muscles are and whether or not you're able to effectively um, and quickly enough exhale the waste product of that air. Again, consult your care team. If I'm having surgery, will it be safe for me to get supplemental oxygen? This one is a little bit more difficult to answer without having more information. Um, if it's a situation where you're going under general anesthesia and they're inserting an endotracheal tube, but they're intubating you and they're connecting a ventilator to that tube and they're breathing for you with mechanical ventilation, then getting supplemental oxygen should not be a problem. Um, some individuals are more sensitive to supplemental oxygen than others. So again, everyone is different and you should consult your NMD specializing care team on this. Lastly, another frequently asked question, I'm having dental work done. Is nitrous oxide laughing gas safe? I'm going to answer this one the way that my pulmonologist who specialized in neuromuscular disease related breathing issues, who's now retired, um, how she answered it for me. She advised me against this. She said, you know, it probably is not safe, um, but it really depends on how long they're going to be administering that. And sometimes it's difficult for um, a dental procedure in advance of that procedure for the clinician to know how long they're going to need to perform that procedure and administer that nitrous oxide. So I think in, in the case of my pulmonologist, she had seen one individual who had a dental procedure with that, who did well at the time of the procedure, but then returned home and began to experience some symptoms of carbon dioxide retention and had a little bit of a respiratory crisis. So again, it's one of those things to discuss with your care team and make the decision that's best for you. Lastly, I want to encourage you to learn more and get support from our 501c3 nonprofit public charity known as Breathe With MD, Inc. 
Visit our website, breathewithmd.org, for lots of resources and educational information. I encourage you to frequently visit our public Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash breathewithmd. You'll find a lot of great information there, graphics and terminology that's defined, lots of animations, videos, and we also, of course, share quotes from uh, peer-reviewed medical articles with a link for you to go access that article, read it in detail, and or print it and share it with your NMD care team. Our Facebook support group is very popular. We have more than 1,300 members located all across the globe at this time. It is a private group. It's only open for those who live with a neuromuscular disease and or have a loved one who does. And it's just a great source of support for asking questions. And again, that group has resources in, in the way of files that are uploaded. Lots of medical articles exist there and other resources. We have a presence on popular social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram. And of course, I encourage you to check out our Breathe With MD Inc. YouTube channel. You'll find this video there as well as many others. And of course, feel free to reach out to us by email at info at breathewithmd.org. Just know that we have no paid staff. We're entirely volunteer led and all of us are peers in the NMD care community, meaning that we either live with a neuromuscular disease or we have a loved one who does. And so for that reason, you're going to find um, that we may not respond to your email immediately because this is a part-time um, endeavor for us. Thank you so much for your attention during this presentation. I hope that you found the content to be of use to you and that you can share this with others in the neuromuscular disease community.